backpacking doesn't always go as planned. I'm just hoping this rain quits at some point today. I just got back from a four day trip with two days of sustained cold rain. And you know it's dangerous because I stopped filming. Today we're talking about the only gear that matters when you're cold and wet. Oh yeah, and this was in grizzly country. But first, a little backstory. The first day of our four day hike was beautiful, but hot. We hiked a short six miles, set up camp, and took in the views. But not long after we got to camp, some nasty clouds started coming in. So the forecast is calling for rain all night tonight, into tomorrow, through the day tomorrow. So that is a lot of rain. And just in case we wake up and it's raining, we wanted to have a place where we could pack up our gear without it all getting wet as we're packing it away. And so we strung up this tarp. It's a Dyneema tarp from Z-Packs. We didn't really have a great place to put it. And so we strung it up right here, staked it out the best we could in the back. But this way, if it's raining in the morning, at least we have a place where we can pack up all of our stuff to get ready to hike through the rain tomorrow. Rain all night tonight and all day tomorrow. It ought to be fun. Our campsite was a designated site, basically meaning you have to camp where they tell you. In this case, on a tent pad that looked pretty flat, but ultimately started pooling under our tent. Pooling water under the tent is never a good thing. You will almost certainly get water in your tent one way or another. The best way to avoid this is to set your tent up on a slight incline that will drain water away from your tent. But we didn't do that, so we ended up with some water in the tent. But nothing we couldn't handle so long as the conditions didn't get worse. So I want to talk a little bit about how I'm keeping everything dry. As you can see, obviously the camera, I'm not keeping dry, nor am I keeping my feet dry. I've got non-waterproof trail runners on, and I'm just letting them get wet and let the water drain out. My friend has waterproof boots on, but we think his membrane's been compromised, and so he's just walking in puddles. And right now, even though it's maybe 40 degrees at the most right now, I'm still preferring the trail runners. In my pack, I've got my sleep system and my extra clothes in dry bags, and then I've also got this rain cover on. I'm wearing a rain kilt that keeps my pants dry, and then I'm also wearing this rain jacket. I've got the umbrella. I took it off because we were in a bunch of brush earlier and the wind has picked up a little bit, but to be honest with you, I prefer it to this rain jacket because as you can see, like my hood is just like flapping all in my face. My glasses stay drier with the umbrella, but it's not best in every condition. And so we're about two miles from camp. I think we're gonna be up above tree line, which means no tarp tonight. And so I'm just hoping this rain quits at some point today. We'll see. We were prepared and feeling good, especially as we arrived at camp. Okay, I don't even know if I can show you, but we just walked down into this little bowl and there is no less than 20 waterfalls flowing down into this. I don't know if that's because of the rain or if there's typically this many waterfalls, but even with the weather we're having, it is spectacular. But as I was filming the waterfalls, I kept hearing the sound over my left shoulder. Okay, so just a minute ago, I stopped to tell you about the waterfalls and the whole time that we were standing there, I could hear something just kind of like that. But I couldn't really tell because there's so much wind and waterfalls and all that kind of stuff blowing right now. But I couldn't really tell what it was. So I yelled out, hey bear, a couple times just to let the bear know. And we turned around and we were just 15 feet from a grizzly. He did not seem very interested in us. He's probably about 100 yards up there right now. I'm watching him. And uh, that's the closest I've been to a grizzly, closest I've been to a bear. I'm glad he wasn't interested in us. What we didn't realize is that this wasn't the most dangerous thing that we would face that day. Not long after this shot of us hanging the bear bags, both me and my friend Marty began shivering uncontrollably, which is the first sign of hypothermia. We knew we needed to get out of our wet clothes and into our sleeping bags. And I wish I had footage to show you, but honestly, I was just suffering too much to film anything. Once we finally got our tent set up and into our bags, 
we shivered uncontrollably for four hours, which means our body temps were way too low. We got to camp maybe five hours ago, and we were wet and we were cold to the point that it might have been dangerous. And you know it's dangerous because I stopped filming. And I was just like, we just got to get a tent up and we got to get in our bags and we got to be safe. And so we have been for probably about the last five hours. And from the time that we got the tent set up and got in the bags until now, it has just rained and rained and rained and rained and it just will not stop. And so we are going to stay here for the night and just hope that at some point the rain lets up. But what happened? Why did we get so wet even with our rain gear on? I think our main problem was tall brush. Large portions of this hike are in tall brush that can reach all the way to your shoulders. Not only is the brush wet, but it's rubbing against your rain gear. Modern rain gear uses durable water repellent finishes that will wear off with just normal use, but can wear off quickly with excessive abrasion. I noticed earlier in the day that my rain jacket was beading nicely, but at some point it stopped beading altogether indicating that the water repellent finish had worn off or at least become very overwhelmed. It's hard to say exactly what happened. We had prolonged rain, waterfalls we had to hike under to avoid slipping off the mountain, the humidity was so high that it was actually forming on the mesh of our double wall tent. Either through condensation or a gear failure, somehow water was getting inside our rain gear. As long as we were moving, we could keep up our temperature. But once we stopped at camp, we both quickly became cold. And at that point, all we could do was get inside our warm sleeping bags. So I was thinking about the situation that we found ourselves in yesterday where we were so wet and so cold, on the verge of hypothermia probably, and all we needed to do was just get a tent set up and get in our sleeping bags. What I realized during that time is that everything else goes out the window. So all the other things that I typically do to try to protect my gear from getting wet just did not matter. I, all I needed to do was get the tent set up and get myself in a sleeping bag. And all the things I do like putting a trash bag in there to put extra clothes in and making sure that things don't get wet from rain that might accidentally get inside the tent. You have to protect your gear from getting wet. And when you are too wet and too cold, you can't think about anything else. You just have to get warm. And that's what was happening to us yesterday. Whenever you get to one of those situations where you're just too wet and too cold, take the time and make yourself go through the actions to keep the rest of your gear dry, to keep your extra clothes dry, to keep your extra socks dry, to keep your puffy jacket and your pillow and everything else dry because your life may depend on it. So what do I do to keep dry when it's raining like this? Most importantly, I protect my sleeping bag with its own dry bag or trash bag. This way, no matter what, even if all my clothes are wet, I have something dry and warm that I can get into. I try to bring a tent that pitches fly first or tent and fly together so that water doesn't get in as I'm pitching the tent. I look for a campsite that has a slight incline that drains well so water won't pool under my tent. I have separate dry bags or trash bags for my puffy jacket, fleece, and extra socks. And then I'll use those bags to store anything inside the tent so even if water does get in, items like my clothes, my camera, or other things will stay dry through the night. And best practice, although I can't always say that I do this, is to make sure all rain gear has a good DWR coating. Like I said, even factory applied coatings can wear off and need to be reapplied with something like Nick Wax. Nick Wax isn't sponsoring this video, but they have sponsored videos of mine in the past. It's a great product that I can't recommend enough. And speaking of sponsors, I want to thank all my sponsors, including Garage Grown Gear, who make trips like this and videos like this possible. It's retailers like Garage Grown Gear that help keep me outfitted and prepared when things go bad like they did on this trip. Garage Grown Gear only sells backpacking gear, and they are experts in cottage and ultralight gear. They have everything you need to be well prepared for bad or good weather, including stuff you can't find anywhere else. Please go check them out through the links in the description or at garagegrowngear.com. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and it looks like the fog is finally starting to lift. We're getting our first views of the valley across the way there and it's getting a little bit warmer. Hopefully we'll get some sunshine before the end of the day.